Respiratory distress is one of those things where if you had it, nobody has to tell you that you're short of breath. But I think it's important to recognize when somebody else is in respiratory distress. So first, let's just draw our generic patient. Let's call him Bob and let's give him some hair. I feel like giving hair to my stick figures masks the fact that I can't draw. <laughs> okay, so Bob here has respiratory distress. Let's draw the rest of his body. And here we're going to talk about acute respiratory distress. In other words, it, um, it happened pretty recently in terms of days, not like Bob has had lung disease for years and years. That will look like a different picture. Okay, so if somebody has respiratory distress, we're going to talk about the things that you can see to tell you and the things you can hear. Those are, I think, the only two senses that are really important. I don't think you can touch or taste respiratory distress. So in terms of things you can see, first of all, you never really see a person lying down saying, I'm short of breath. The first thing that somebody would do if they're short of breath is to stand up or to sit up. That's why in the hospital, if somebody has lung disease, you rarely see them lying down all the way in bed. Now, of course, there are many different kinds of lung disease, but the fact that they like to sit up has a few common reasons. First, there's our muscle called the diaphragm. In normal breathing, this curved muscle moves down, which expands the chest cavity, and that's how air goes in through your mouth and your nose. Just by simple rule of gravity, we have to move something down. So it makes more sense to, it's easier to do that when standing up, just so you don't have to fight the uh, push of gravity down on your chest where you're trying to move your diaphragm towards your feet. Now, another reason if, um, the reason that you are short of breath is because a fluid, if we think of how fluid behaves, then when it's flat, Again, gravity makes it distribute all over the place, and the whole thing, your whole lungs are bathed in the fluid. But if you sit up, the fluid kind of pulls to the bottom. This frees up the top of the lungs here to breathe a little better. So usually people like to sit up when they can't breathe. Now next, you might notice that the rate of breathing might go up. Now in an adult, our normal rate of breathing is eight to 16 per minute. And this is gonna go up just because when you can't move breath as well, people tend to compensate by breathing more. Along with that, the panic of breathing faster and everything um, happens to trigger the sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight response. This is what happens to your body when it's in an emergency and it's trying to either run away or fight. One thing that uh, happens here, which is kind of not related to our topic, is that sympathetic nervous system allows your pupils to get bigger. This allows more light in, and then additionally, your blood flows to your arms, your legs, and away from your intestines, so you don't have to digest for the few minutes you're gonna be fighting. In our lungs though, sympathetic nervous system can cause bronchial dilation, which literally just means these airways in our lungs, as they branch off, they get bigger. And just a bigger diameter allows air to flow better. I didn't mean to draw his trachea, his windpipe, so deviated here. Imagine that this is straight down and in the middle of the neck. But in fact, it, actually, if you have respiratory distress because of something like a pneumothorax, when one lung has collapsed, then this trachea would deviate to one side or the other, but we can't see that just by looking at the person without an x-ray or some other form of imaging. Today we're just talking about naked eye seeing someone. Okay, so rate goes up, and then the next thing, there's a group of signs, we call it increased work of breathing, which is at the same time really specific, work of breathing, and also really vague, what is that? So work of breathing usually is pretty quiet. The diaphragm moves down, the chest expands. As you're doing right now, it doesn't take too much conscious effort. But when someone's short of breath, other muscles get recruited, like muscles in the neck, muscles in the shoulders. You might see them kind of tensing up their neck and shoulders, trying to force that chest cavity bigger. Additionally, we have these, what's well, called retractions, which just means these marks between, there's muscles between our ribs, our ribs going all the way up, and the muscles between them can work so hard to compensate for respiratory distress that you can see the markings. If you take off our patient's shirt, you might be able to see the traces of their ribs, both because the muscles are working hard and the decreased pressure in the lungs because you can't breathe well, sucks that tissue in. So these tracts are called retractions and that's part of work of breathing. Now in an infant, you might see something called nasal flaring where their nostrils get bigger. If you try it right now, you can sort of consciously increase the size of your nostrils and that just, again, lets more air in. That's more seen in little babies. Another thing you might see is called cyanosis which just means this blue purplish discoloration. Now we think of blue blood as being lacking oxygen and it's not really blue, but it's just a little darker. And this in our body can show up kind of blueish. And this actually tends to happen in mucous membranes because there's less skin to cover that color. So in the mouth, I mean in the lips, 
and in the eyes and sometimes in the extremities just because they're the furthest away from our heart so the, the hands and the feet sometimes might get blue. Now we're talking about acute distress here but if Bob goes on to have this for years and years a sign you can see in chronic respiratory distress is called clubbing. So usually we have our hand is that one two three that's four fingers so usually you have your hand and the fingers kind of taper off at, at the fingertips that's the normal shape but in clubbing the tips of the fingers can get big and kind of sausage like instead of tapering it's called clubbing and this is chronic and the theory is that because these tips lack oxygen year in year out they kind of go through this hypertrophy which means the more tissues grow to try to gather more oxygen and that's why clubbing happens and this again is chronic so we're not going to see it today in Bob since he just developed this. All right, now moving on to things you can hear. There are a lot of lung sounds that are associated with having lung disease, but in terms of respiratory distress, one thing that comes to mind is strider. Now strider is not, it's usually above the chest cavity, so the restriction is not so much down there, but up here in the shoulder and neck level. I don't know if I can make a convincing noise for strider, but it just sounds like <gasps> when this person is taking the breath in, there's that extra noise. So it's like if you put a straw in your mouth and you try to inhale, this is an inhalation noise. Next you might hear some grunting. This is just because there's so many muscles between the abs, the shoulders, the neck, trying to force air in and out that some of it goes across our vocal cords and it just makes a grunt. This is like in the movies, in the martial arts, when they're punching someone and you're just using so much muscle force that this grunt escapes. Now in general, I think of grunting as kind of an exhaling noise. In, for example, emphysema, when air doesn't get out, some patients use their abs to try to force it out, and the grunting happens when they exhale. Now, usually an adult should be able to say, I can't breathe. They might not say respiratory distress, but they will definitely say, I can't catch my breath. But in the event that they can't tell you that, or if it's a baby or a child, it's important to keep these signs in mind, the things you can see and you can hear when somebody is in respiratory distress.